Toronto Magazine requires a lot of talent. Joe Steck tells us how this works at Compelling Science Fiction. So you've got a staff of great people from around the U.S. And uh, what I saw there was, uh, was, you know, you could staff a research park. You have a lot of uh, uh, high-end uh, brains over there. A lot of those people are actually my friends, people I've worked with before, went to school with, who were also interested in science fiction and wanted to help me out. Some of those people found me after the magazine was launched and, and wanted to volunteer and help out. It's a testament to to the types of stories that we write that those types of scientists and engineers are interested in the magazine and well one of the reasons why they stick around is is because i don't put too many demands on their time either they are there for a single purpose which is to make sure that the stories we publish are fairly plausible and so once i kind of winnow down submissions uh, to about 10 percent I send those out to those advisors and they let me know their thoughts if there's anything that that they think doesn't make sense or needs to be changed or is irredeemable and, and we just can't accept. And that's one of the ways that we keep the quality up. So some magazines are, are uh, a bit risk averse to, okay, let's say it's a little explicit or let's say it's even a little bit politically pointed. Uh, mm. Where do you fall in that spectrum? We've definitely published stories that, you know, could be considered rated R. I think there was a, a story by Rich Larson that was, uh, was pretty dark and disturbing, sort of a little bit uh, outside of the the normal range of what we publish, but it was a, I thought it was a very good story. And so uh, I decided to publish it. In terms of political leanings, I don't know that we have, I mean, those things sometimes are, are invisible to you unless you hold sort of the opposite political view. So I think that that's something that I might not be uh, very well equipped to evaluate, but we don't, intentionally publish anything that is explicitly political. Uh, But then again, we don't really shy from it either, right? The story and the science and engineering are really the only things we care about. Honestly, that's about what I expect from folks in Boulder. Uh, And I think that's all good. So, uh, you know, I live in Seattle, et cetera. The science fiction genre is about opening your mind to things that are maybe less comfortable. Being rigid around science fiction is is quite an, uh, how to, for me, that's a sort of a weird thing. Uh, Of course, if you're doing a publication and and, and you're looking for a niche, you might do that for your readership, of course, if you have a readership of of such uh, folks. But uh, I always found that kind of an interesting uh, contradiction, I suppose. talk a little bit about Boulder here. Is Boulder a good place to have a science fiction publication? You know, most of the activity surrounding the magazine happens online. You know, I'm a, a software engineer by trade and I've given some technical talks up at the Twitter office in Boulder to a, to a big Python group and, and we've talked about the magazine a little bit there, but only in the context of the software tools that I built to, to help automate like large parts of the magazine. I have never had any kind of explicit meetups or or uh, discussions with people in Boulder specifically regarding science fiction itself. And so that's something that I would definitely be up to doing. I, Boulder and Louisville and sort of the surrounding areas have really great independent bookstores uh, that I should probably um that I should probably go engage with more. Up to this point, the the location of the magazine hasn't really mattered that much. For example, Boulder is a site has a lot of NOAA offices, so a lot of research science oriented people. Yes. And you covered the fact about the IT folks. And then there's also some NASA science going on over there. So there's the Star Registry Group. 
Uh, like if you want to register a, a star, you say, hey, there's a, there's a place out there, I'm going to name it after me. You can, uh, uh, they're in Boulder. Yeah, there are a lot of great national labs in Boulder. You know, not only NOAA, but NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. JILA Jill, is up there at CU. Um, I think that stands for the Joint Institute for Laboratory Astrophysics or something like that. When I was in school, I did some simulations for the International Linear Collider there in the in the physics building. Uh, there's a lot of interesting people and, and good science going on in Boulder. And actually, a couple of the advisors for the magazine are people that I met while in school there. So in that sense, it has been really valuable to be in Boulder. How do people buy your magazine? Right now, the magazine uh, is free to read online. The only thing that we charge for currently are the e-reader versions. So uh, Moby and EPUB format magazines, those are available for, for download through Patreon and also through the Kindle store. So you can buy one-off issues from the Kindle store or you could become a subscriber on Patreon. On Patreon, we have the recurring subscription model where every issue, and at this point, issues are released every six months, you are charged and we send you the uh, Moby and EPUB versions of the magazine. And the reason that I did that is one of the goals of the magazine is also to be kind of encouraging people to read as much science fiction as possible. and and making it free on the website, we reach more people than, than we would otherwise reach. So if you just go to compellingsciencefiction.com, there's a subscribe button and that will take you to Patreon. Uh, you could look up Compelling Science Fiction on Patreon if, you, if you'd like to do that, but the easiest way is just go to compellingsciencefiction.com and you can get to all of the projects that we're working on from there. Next episode, we find out what drives Joe Steck to produce this wonderful magazine. Mostly, it's the kind of joy in seeing something that didn't exist come into the world and facilitate that happen. <laughs> <laughs>